to be doing an install of Red Hat OpenShift Container Platform on Azure utilizing the IPI method. Now, as shown before, uh, there are some prerequisites required for this, and I'm going to just walk through them. I'm not going to show you how to do them, but all of that will be available in the blog post. So the first prerequisite is uh, access to an Azure account with the user access administrator role associated to it. I'll post the link for where you can go to create an Azure account uh, in the uh, description below. And then one thing to note about this is that your account needs to be upgraded from the free account to the pay-as-you-go account. This installer will not work if you're currently utilizing the free account. The second thing that you need is a registered domain within the Azure domain system. However, if you would prefer to use a separate domain, you can delegate a third-party domain name to your Azure account. And that's what I'm doing here. Uh, I'll post the link for creating an Azure domain name, uh, which requires you to create an app service in Azure and uh, may lead to extra costs for this. I'll also post the steps to delegate an existing DNS to Azure. And again, that's the method that I used. So I can show you that right now. If I go to my Azure account. So as you can see, my DNS zone is CRAzureOCP.com. And this is hosted through Google Domains. But for the sake of this, I'm just going to show you the uh, delegation. The next prerequisite is that you have verified that your Azure account meets the required limits that are listed on the OpenShift documents. And again, I'll post that in the description below. Um, this is to verify that uh, when the installer runs, it's able to create the infrastructure that is needed for OpenShift. Uh, you will get an error if you run the installer and the infrastructure exceeds your resource limits. The fourth prerequisite is to download the OpenShift installer from try.openshift.com for the appropriate operating system. Uh, currently, it's supported on Mac OS and Linux. The fifth prerequisite is to download the OpenShift command line interface tools for your operating system and uh, making sure that when you extract the binary file, you place it in a location that is included in your path variable in order to use these from anywhere in the command line and not just from the folder that you extract it from. You also need a saved copy of the pull secret that is provided on try.openshift.com. The pull secret is how Red Hat ties your subscription to the OpenShift instance. You can save the pull secret to a text file, or you can copy and paste it directly into the installer, and that's the method that I'll be using. You also need to have a created service principle following the steps uh, in the service principle guide below. Uh, one thing to note is that the password created for the service principle sometimes breaks the installer, so it is important that you ensure that the password doesn't have any special characters. And to change this, uh, you should log into your Azure account and create a new secret for that application. And finally, uh, it's important for production environments to have an SSH key generated for the bootstrap node in case of failure during the installation. That way you can SSH into the specific instances of the machines uh, if there's an error in order to get the logs. With that being said, uh, we'll start with the installer. So what I like to do is I like to create a separate directory for my installer. This is because when running the installer, it generates a lot of local uh, files that can be used to delete the cluster later. Um, and so as you can see here, nothing currently in my uh, install directory. Uh, the OpenShift cluster installer does take a directory as an option, but if you run it from the directory that you've already created, then you don't have to um, add that option. And so uh, the first command to run is OpenShift hyphen install create cluster. And as you can see, the first thing it asks you for is an SSH key. Again, this is important for troubleshooting if for some reason the image breaks. The SSH keys will be added to each of the VMs. So I'm going to use the one that I already created. Second step is to select the platform. So for this, we're using Azure. 
this, uh, as you can see, it kind of hung a little bit with the installer. That is because it's checking my Azure credentials. So if you have not run this before, you will be asked to enter some Azure credentials, which I can show you here. All of that gets stored in the .azure directory on your home directory. So as you can see, I have a couple different things. OS Silver's principal is created, Azure JSON, um, an SESS file, as well as the Azure profile.json. So when you run this installer for the first time, it will ask you for the service principal information as well as some other credential information. So that way it can authenticate. And right there is where it will check to make sure that you can actually authenticate. So as mine's already authenticated, we can just move on to the next step. Next step is to select a region. Uh, for me, I'm gonna use the East US region. That's the closest region to me, but use whichever uh, data center is closest to you. It's gonna ask you for the base domain. Again, this is after you've already delegated or created a domain. So as you can see, CRAzureOCP.com, same thing. Select that, and then it's gonna ask you for a cluster name. So for this, I'm going to do OCP test. And again, on a lot of these, you can see that there is type question mark for help. If you do type that, it will give you some information such as for this, no spaces, no special characters, and no uppercase letters. Oops. And then we need the pull secret. And once you enter the pull secret, the installer will begin creating the infrastructure. But for the time being, enter the pull secret. Once you hit enter, the installer will start. And so usually this install takes about 30 minutes. You'll see there's some information that gets populated at the end of the installer. And I will pause the video here and we can go back through that information once my installer is done. See now the installer has completed and we have a, a few pieces of information that I just wanna go over and then I'll go over how you can destroy the cluster. So the first thing that the installer gives you in terms of information is the API URL. And so this you can access or you can use to access the OpenShift cluster from a command line interface. And so I'm going to do that right now. So to access the OpenShift cluster with this URL, all you have to do is if I copy the URL, use the OC login command. And again, OC is the OpenShift container command line interface tools that you downloaded during the prerequisites. If you might use the minus U, the account that is created at the time of installation is the cube admin account. Use the minus P option. The password is given to you in this bottom line here. So if I copy that. And then without adding any sort of option indicator, you just paste the URL, API URL. going to ask me to accept the certificates the first time. As you can see, logged in. If I do OC, who am I? And OC, who am I? Show server. There's my user, which is cube admin, as well as the server that I'm accessing. So I'll log out of that. And again, logged out. Some other information that you're given is the URL to access uh, the cluster through a browser. And that's the web console URL right here. So if we again use this, and again, because we haven't set any certificates yet, it's gonna ask me to accept the certificates should pop up one more time. The username is going to once again be cube admin and the password will once again be the password that is given to you at the time of install. And as you can see, I'm logged in. Uh, it does notify you that you're logged in as a temporary administrator user, which is the cube admin account. And it is best practice to disable this account once you set up a proper administrator. Uh, account. You get the cluster API address, which is the same one that we're given during the install. It shows you the provider that's used by the pull secret, um, as well as the version. Uh, and this is 
the OpenShift console. So if I were to log out, go back to the terminal. The last piece of information I want to go over that it gives you is this uh, system admin command. And so you can find that on the line right above the web console URL. So as you can see, it says to access the cluster as system admin, run the OC or run export cube config equals this information. This is going to point you to the location of the cube config file, which is under the directory that you installed OpenShift on. And uh, it'll allow you to log into the system as system admin, which is a hidden system administrator account. And then finally, if we list out all of the files that were created, you can see there's a, a few pieces of information that are created. When you run the OpenShift cluster destroy command, which we'll run in a second, you want to verify that all of this is deleted and this will ensure that your cluster was accurately deleted. So again, as I mentioned, we're gonna run the OpenShift hyphen install destroy cluster. And again, this either has to be run with the option of the directory that you installed it on or in the directory that you installed it. And now, there we go. And so now it will begin to delete all of the uh, resources that were created on OpenShift, uh, Azure for OpenShift. Again, this will take maybe 10 to 30 minutes in order to appropriately delete everything. So I'm going to end the video here. But uh, once you are done running this command, it is uh, recommended that you go and check, once again, like I mentioned, the files in the directory, as well as log into Azure and ensure that everything was accurately deleted. Sometimes it can get hung up with trying to delete a resource and it won't actually notify you. In order to do that, you can run the log level debug command. Um, when you run this OpenShift install destroy cluster and it will show you all of the information that it's trying to delete at the same time. Hope you found this video to be helpful. Uh, I will be posting other videos as I create them for the other major hyperscalers as well as other uh, Red Hat products. Thank you.